You may know him as the conservative politician who served as President Trump's VP for four years. But tonight, we are getting to know who is Mike Pence the person. He says he's well known, but not known well. We recently sat down with him in Iowa, where he hopes his personal brand of politics will translate into results. It's the latest in our series, Who Is? Giving viewers a chance to hear from presidential hopefuls. It's a special initially brought to us by ABC News legends Peter Jennings and Charlie Gibson. Were you conscious as a child and as a young man that you came from a life of privilege? So did you think to yourself, Barack, what kind of hubris is this? Being president. And they said, be a man. <laughs> yeah, they said, be a man. They said, we're not accepting girls. But you're a Mormon kid. No drinking, no smoking. Growing up as a child, what did you think you wanted to be? I've heard you say before that you're a Christian, a conservative, and a Republican in that order. Mm -hmm. If I could get you to just elaborate with a few more words, who is Mike Pence? Well, I, I, I can't say it much more succinctly than that. I mean, my faith is the most important thing in my life. My family is everything to me. But my values are the principles that have always made this country strong and prosperous and made America everything that it's been before. And, but I'm also a proud Republican. I believe the Republican Party holds the keys today to really restore our country, to put our economy back on a path of prosperity, and also to have America standing tall in the world as the leader of the free world. And uh, I'm going to work my heart out to take all those values and those principles and uh, earn the right to carry them uh, into 2024 and hopefully to the White House. There was an editor of your hometown paper who said that Mike Pence wanted to be president practically since he popped out of the womb. Uh, <laughs> when did you first know that, that you had this calling or desire? Well, I, you know, I didn't grow up in a political family. My father was a combat veteran. My grandfather was an immigrant. My dad ran a small business. As a young man, I was deeply inspired by the life and example of the late President John F. Kennedy and the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., it was their example that, that drew me to early activism in the Dem Democratic Party. What made you switch teams? Well, it was just the voice and the values of the 40th president of the United States. And Ronald Reagan, who also grew up in the Midwest. I can't tell you how terrific it feels to get out of Washington and to be here with you. I heard uh, the strength of a commitment to those timeless American ideals, but I also heard the way he spoke about them, always with gentleness and respect, even with people that would differ with him. I knew that uh, uh, the Republican Party uh, was my future, and I joined the Reagan Revolution and never looked back. Your greatest strength? My family. Greatest weakness? Impatience. Fairest criticism of you? Um, I tend to expect too much. He says his faith is not just the foundation of his family and his core beliefs, but it also informs many of his policies, from his stance on gay marriage to abortion. And I couldn't be more proud to be part of an administration that has stood strong, stood without apology for the sanctity of human life. Tell me about the, uh, the, the Christian concert that you went to in Kentucky early on. That <laughs> I imagine you would think changed your life did. I found my way uh, along with a small group of college students to Asbury University where there was a Christian music festival taking place where there was some of the early contemporary Christian bands were performing and in between them there was preaching and, and it was as though I, I heard for the first time that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whoever might believe in him might not perish but have everlasting life. And on a rainy night in 1978, as a freshman in college, I, I, I stood up, um, uh, not just out of a sense of agreement with the truth of the gospel, but because my heart was broken with gratitude for what had been done for me on the cross. And I walked down and I prayed to receive Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, and it's changed my life forever. We brought in Karen, his wife of 38 years and mother of his three children, to keep Mike honest about their love story. You all remember the first time you met? <laughs> you better believe it. <laughs> Tell me about it. Well, I was, uh, I was attending a little Catholic church, actually just a block away from the Indiana governor's residence, where we would live a long time later. And I saw this beautiful brunette with a guitar uh, up in the worship group. And uh, 
I followed her out the back of the church that day, and then we walked out of the front of a church a year and a half later, and uh, <laughs> she's been my wife for 38 years, and God's greatest blessing in my life. Is it true the first time he called, he didn't say anything and hung up the phone? That's exactly true. How did yes. that happen? Yeah. Well, I was watching my sister's kids, and he was <laughs> calling her to see what the scoop was on me, because uh, I had told him that she attended the same law school that he was at. And I was watching her kids that week, and so I answered. And when he realized it was me on the phone, he hung up. <laughs> Great first impression. <laughs> but I called her right back. <laughs> Tell me about eight months later, the loaf of bread. Well, we had made, we had made a habit of heading down to uh, uh, Broad Ripple Canal. Uh -huh. It's in the heart of Indianapolis, and um, part of what was supposed to be the old Erie Canal system. And uh, we would feed the ducks uh, and uh, enjoy some conversation and some time. And so uh, I hollowed out the end of a, of a loaf of French bread um, on one and on the other. And I hit a, I hit a bottle of champagne in, in one of the loaves and uh, a ring box <laughs> in the top. And uh, she opened up, uh, as, she, as she broke the bread, the ring popped out. and. Uh, I dropped down on one knee with the traffic whizzing by and uh, asked her to be my wife at that park bench. Kind of romantic. Very romantic. He is a romantic. <laughs> they say they still pray together and view the presidency not as a goal but a calling placed on his heart by God. You have a favorite scripture? Over the mantle in my study in Indiana and it's Jeremiah 29 11, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. It's very much been our, our family's lodestar, but I also believe uh, it's part of how we bring this country back. If people of faith will simply turn their hearts back to Him, renew their faith in Him, I know that America will again renew its hope and find a boundless future for all the American people. Our thanks to Mike Pence for that conversation. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.